This is the show we have to do. It's about one of my favorite all-time Cubs, Andre Dawson. He wants to be in the Hall of Fame and his plaque to have that beautiful Cubs hat. We're going to talk about it here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Should the Hawk be able to determine what uniform he wears in the Hall? You can determine where you go to get your Cubs content, and we appreciate that you're here with us right now. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy Cubs content. Hit the bell so you know when we drop new shows. And thank you for hanging out with us. All right, he's Chad Anderson, and I'm Mick Gillespie. Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel, and thanks for being here with us as we talk about one of my all-time favorite Cubs, Andre Dawson, who's made it clear that he wants to be in a Cubs uniform in uh, the Hall of Fame. I I have no problem with that. As a matter of fact, it's kind of weird that you're not allowed to, to pick what uniform you wear in the Hall of Fame. And if you remember, Andre Dawson did play the majority of his career in Montreal. But then, of course, uh, it was 1987 when he became a Cub, when he was uh, the MVP. I remember watching many of his games that year, 49 home runs, 137 runs batted in. That led the league. Uh, he was amazing. He hit 287. And um, was really one of the most fun players to watch. And, I mean, really li listening to Harry and Steve on WGN and then watching uh, he and Rhino and the rest of those Cubs play was kind of uh, how a lot of my days were spent. I, mean, I love those guys. And even though he, he, he wasn't with the Cubs – uh, very long. I mean, when you talk about a 20 year career, he was there from, he was there 87, 88, 89, 90, 91 and 92. And then went to Boston. He feels yeah. like those were the pivotal years of his career. And that's, and that's what really defined him as one of the best players in baseball. You, you know, what's so interesting, Mick, when you look at his stats is we always, and, and it's true, but you look at people's prime as like, you know, what, 27 to 31, 28 to 32, um, kind of right in there. Cause you're, you're a tad older than, than when you're a rookie or coming up, but you're also, you've gained that much knowledge. You've gained that much experience, um, in the league at that point as well. And how about Dawson and the numbers he put up when he was 32 is when he was a cub in 1987. Right. Uh up until he left the Cubs when he was 37 years old. So I mean that's a pretty nice long career to get. Imagine if you could always get value out of guys uh in their mid to upper 30s like that. Um the way the Cubs did with with Andre Dawson, you know, was rookie of the year all the way back into 77 um with Montreal. But yeah, I was I was kind of surprised that he switched, but at the same time uh, of course, we're a little biased here, but I always remember the Hawk that way, you know, and just when I think of Dawson, I I know he was an expo, but I just always think of him as a Cub and he was an all star for the Cubs five out of six seasons with Chicago. Yeah, uh, the National Baseball Hall of Fame has not allowed players to choose their team cap on their plaque since 2001. Before that, you could do that. And and basically, he told the Chicago Tribune that, you know, instead of an Expos hat, he'd like a Cubs hat. I, I, I feel like I've heard him say that before. It's just news now uh, because I, I think that he's, you know, said that again. He finally got in in 2010. And if you remember, it, he, he didn't get in for a long time. He was one of those players where kind of like Dale Murphy is now. Ron Santo was one of those guys who we all know belongs in, but for some reason they can't get over the hump. Maybe they didn't have enough games or they didn't hit historic milestones, you know, or whatever. But you know when you saw them play, they were a Hall of Famer, that they were one of the best players in baseball. And I got to tell you, Andre Dawson was one of the best players in baseball. Let me, let me throw this up here right now. I, I love the guy. That's uh, Rhino and uh, the guy with the uh, – the high top fade is me. And yeah, then, uh, 
They look at me and then that's Hawk. And we're like back backstage at the Cubs convention. And so I, you know, I spent a year with Rhino a great relationship with, with him. And we, as you can imagine, we, uh, we like to cut up and joke around. And I used to say to him all the time, I'd come in and, you know, mess around with him in his office. And I'd be like, Hey, you know who my favorite cub was back in your day? I'd get him, I'd try to like lead him on and say him. And then I'd go Andre Dawson and I'd walk out. <laughs> Cause that's just like, he thinks that's funny, you know, like he loves that stuff. So, yeah. but I love that. I honestly, I love both of those guys. They were my two cubs. Like, you know, they were the two guys that you would, you wanted to be in the backyard playing wiffle ball or in your little league game. Like, you know, uh, I, you, I taped my knees because the Hawk used to have the knees, you know, that you would tape up like th- these two are two legends. I mean, and I and definitely legends and great guys as well. And it was so cool because I had never met the Hawk. I mean, I had, but I never really got introduced to him. And Rhino's like, Hey, come here. I want to introduce you to Mick, you know, and it, us kind of cutting it up in the background before I got to go on stage and do my thing. And those right, guys cool. had just finished up doing theirs. So, but I, I, I love the Hawk and I, I totally get it. You know, you, you want to, you want, to be remembered for the team that meant the most to your career. And, and Andre Dawson, when he basically went to the owner and said, here's a blank contract, you put whatever number you think I deserve on there. I want to play for the Cubs. That's what it's all about, man. You know, and we don't have that anymore. The days aren't like that now, but that's what made him so special. You know, it wasn't like the Cubs went out and, you know, and 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 paid over 10 other teams to get him. This is a guy that wanted to wear that that blue and 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 red uniform. They wanted yeah. to wear the the blue cap with the red C. This is a guy that got it and the city got him too. And honestly, and who knows what's going to happen with Belly, but Belly's the first guy that I can remember that signed as a free agent and just was accepted that fast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love Dawson. Um, I remember, and you mentioned, you know, Cubs back then, uh, these two and, and grace. You know, oh those, yeah. Those were my three, man. The, these two, and then throw grace in there. Um, I, I had a nice little tier two for, uh, Jerome Walton and Sean Dunstan back in the day also. But, um, you know, my favorite memory of, of Hawk was I, I loved watching him throw a ball from right field. Yeah. He just had a freaking cannon. Um, and then I also just remember, uh, one of the first games or not first games, just one of the games like really sticks out is Joe West behind the plate. Imagine that. Um, Joe West is actually great. You know, he, he's so much fun. I I've gotten, I was fortunate enough in Kansas city a few years ago when the Cubs were playing the Royals, I was there. Um, and I got to hang out with Joe West at a bar after the game. And he told some phenomenal stories. He didn't bring this game up, but he told some great stories. About Did you Tom buy him around? Uh, he actually bought me. Uh, oh, look at that. Stuff. Yeah, look at that. it was great. It was him, Doug Eddings, uh, the whole umpiring crew. Yeah, it's him, Doug Edding. It was. They all go out together. Um, and I forgot the uh oh, I forgot the other one, but um it was funny because I saw Doug Eddings run a guy like a week later, and I'm like, I just had beers <laughs> with Doug Eddings and he ran a guy. And uh it was, it was a lot of fun. We've but, talked about this on the broadcast before. Like, if you were a home plate umpire, what would your threat strike three call be? Mine would be ha. Oh, uh, you you pull ah. the lever like you, you pull, even pull and up. I'm I'm sideways and pull. Yeah, yeah okay. like, but, but you pull like you pull the lever and then go. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm coming this way. Yeah. yeah. OK, uh, I would I like the close ah. this like I I like that, too. I go sideways, but just this. I don't have any yeah. vertical motion. Just right, 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 right. Yeah. So uh, but my favorite was was Hawk, Joe West, um, Don Zimmer. And oh yeah, Zim. When Dawson gets um, you know, called out, uh, was it on strikes, I think, and he gets pissed off, gets run, has to be held back, goes into the dugout, and then starts throwing bats out onto the field. <laughs> and I remember yeah, Harry like those Carey, strike calls. Yeah, I remember Harry Carey just feeling, you know, the 
calling the game with Stoney and just oh how great it was and how hilarious was so it was. Good. As a kid, like I mean, we don't see a lot of that even today when managers get mad. Like you see some of the antics, but man, watching uh, bats getting thrown off to, onto the field uh, that was hilarious to watch. Yeah. So basically, the uh, and I'll explain this to you a little bit better now is that uh, Andre Dawson sent a letter to Jane Forbes Clark, the chairman of the Hall of Fame Board of Directors, and basically in the committee, and he, he wants the possibility of changing his plaque, and he hasn't heard back yet, but he said that I just felt, I just felt my presence all along was a Cub, despite playing 11 years in Montreal. I had my reasons, and I think that should have been something we sat down and discussed. And and I get it, man. He said it was an eye-opening experience for me. Dawson said about playing in Chicago, the adoring of the fan, the uh the adoring fan base, the welcoming city, the joy of being able to experience that feeling in the second half of my career. He said I was one of the more popular players in Montreal, but I would consider myself an organizational icon or the most popular. Um, and and I mean, I or he said he wouldn't in Montreal, but when push came to shove and I became a free agent, I think it was handled poorly. And in a sense, I was really forced out. The change of scenery in Chicago rejuvenated me because of how warmly I was received. So the, despite me butchering that, I think you get what he's saying there <laughs> is that is basically saying that, you know, I was a popular player in Montreal, but you know what, you know, take me or leave me. I get to Chicago and people love me and I, I'm one of those people. I love them. So, uh, well, and it also, also changed his career too, because once he became a cub, he was a household name. Yeah. Yeah, he was, um, bigger market franchise, you know, one just being in the USA. Right. And then the Cubs, much more, even though they didn't win a lot um, from 45 to 84, um, you know, you still had the Cubs, which was just more of a popular franchise. Chicago is a huge market. Um, but, you know, also, too, it's hard to not think that Olympic Stadium back in the day in Montreal, like you can't imagine. I don't know. I was never there. I'm not an Olympic Stadium historian, but I, I you just start putting all of the elements together, right? Just all of the feelings and the vibes aside from just the game of baseball and playing and the team and the organization, like you start putting together Wrigley field, you start putting together that the Cubs were coming off of a playoff appearance in 84 and then had a playoff appearance in 89 Montreal was only a contender two or three seasons while he was there for 11, the late eighties or really the mid eighties, late eighties, um, the Cubs were very much contenders with higher expectations. Mm -hmm. A lot of things there probably add to why he kind of had a more uh, connection with with the Cubs and the city and whatnot as well. Guys, I want to remind you a couple things. First off, our show right now is brought to you by the Tennessee Smokies, the Cubs AA affiliate, and uh, their team store, SmokiesBaseball.com backslash store. They have all the great gear celebrating a championship for the first time in 45 years. Not 108 years, but uh, 45 years. So uh, half of that and a little bit less. But uh, they've got gear there that they want to tell you about and they want you to check out. So make sure you swing by there. And every time we hang out with Chad Anderson from Modern Lending. Yeah. Chad, you're brought to you by your own company. How about that? I'm brought to you, yeah, imagine that. It's, it's kind of fun to get to brag on yourself. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we've, we've helped uh, me and my team over 10,000 families in the last 13 years. That's my mortgage career. 13 years, 10,000 families, um, people, uh, you know, we've just been fortunate and blessed that they've trusted us uh, to help them and kind of guide them through. So websites there on the screen, that is actually my direct phone number and email. It doesn't go to anyone else. It comes straight to me, text, call, whatever. Um, would love to hear from you if we could help, whether it's just picking our brain, asking a mortgage question, asking our advice or opinion, or helping you with a purchase or refinance. Um, would love to hear from you. 
What people don't get a lot of times, even though rates are higher than two years ago, we are still seeing a lot of refinances and people still buying homes because when rates do go down, home prices will go back up very quickly. So um, like I said, if we can help, no pressure at all. I'd love to just chat with you. Um, reach out. Information's right there on the screen. All right. A couple things before we belt for the day or maybe just for right now, depending on what's going on. Your thoughts on uh, Ryan Flaherty, the uh, former Padres bench coach and former Cubs number one draft pick, back as the bench coach for Craig Council. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty interesting. Um, happy to see it. You know, I like Ryan, um, him and Ottavi and a Nashville Council. guy went to Vandy. By the way, yeah, that's right. He is a Vandy guy. Yeah, so you know that's cool too. Um, winter meetings going to be in Nashville. That's coming up in a week. I'll be so there on Tuesday. You ready yeah, for me? Yeah, I'm ready for you. Come on, okay. man. It's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, it, it's good. Um, you figured too that the staff had to, it's not like some other sports where you have to have the staff in place, but it's just kind of nice, especially when you're targeting trades or free agents and whatnot. And as we know, yeah. the Cubs are very, very active right now. Um, so good to see some of that kind of coming together and council starting to uh, build his empire. All right. Last thing, too. I'm expecting the Cubs to be very active at this uh, winter meetings. I think they might pull off a trade. We'll see what happens. But I, I think there's an abundance of players that they have at their disposal in the minor leagues and that they need a pitcher. They need a first baseman. Uh, in a third base, center field. You know, some of you guys are like, "What about Mike Talkman?" I mean, you know, you also got uh, Canario and and PCA for that position. I think center field's locked down, but I, I, I'm looking at third base being some guys you have in the system. First base being open. I don't know if the, I don't think they trust Matt Mervis, and then obviously starting pitching and maybe some back end bullpen guys. Yeah, um, man. It's like, which one's going to be the first domino to fall? Right. You know, that that's it. Everybody's on the edge of their seats just waiting for something to happen. I, I don't know. We talked about it on a previous show, Mick. Like, do the Cubs go free agent first and then look at trades so they kind of figure out what they have to deal with and work right. with? Do they trade first and then, okay, we've given away all our prospects. Now, right. we're, now we're backed into a corner and have to throw money at a guy because you can't trade for them, obviously. They're a free agent. I don't know, but it's going to be a very, very interesting next week or two and seeing how some of these dominoes start to fall in place. All right, yeah, so we'll be following that. We'll talk to you guys again tomorrow, if not sooner. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Cubs Baseball Channel, and go Cubs!